Hey there and welcome to After Work. My name is Valentine and in this video we're going to be talking about becoming a data scientist in the financial sector and this might involve you um, working in banks or in financial or fintech startups um, as they are called. It might re um, um, uh, be that you might want to work as a data scientist within the insurance industry um, or across other various finance institutions, it's accounting firms or um, whatever financial institution. So um, this video will help you just to give you an idea of what to expect when it comes to working as a financial data scientist. That way you are, um, you're in a position to know whether this is the right path that you ought to undertake. All right, so let's get started. So in terms of having a background when it comes to becoming a finance data scientist, you might want to have some background, um, some domain expertise that pertains to having some um, in-depth understanding of the financial sector, um, also um, its regulatory um, requirements, um, and, and this would give you a, a, a good um, advantage in knowing what kinds of problems are critical for different organizations, different financial organizations. So that when it comes to maybe joining an organization, you know that um, when you as a data scientist, you're able to solve for this particular problem in the organization, then um, the value that will bring will actually be a lot for and would be impactful to not only their customers but also the organization in terms of, 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 of revenue. So um, on the other side in terms of the technical side where you would be required to understand the methodologies, the tools, you would be required to learn more of data collection techniques, how you're able to collect data from um, various sources across um, different, um, um, whether it's databases or um, data lakes or whatever. So having an understanding of um, how you're able to do that, whether it's learning a language like SQL, um, also being able to perform data cleaning using and data cleaning analysis and modeling um, through the use of tools like um, Python or R, that would really, really, really come in handy. Um, in addition to that, you might be required to also work on different kinds of projects. So understanding the kinds of projects that you're going to be working on still related to what I was talking about um, would also come in handy. You would possibly also undertake something like um, risk management projects where you're trying to understand, say, um, you're trying to devise new approaches to handling risk within um, an organization, um, whether it's developing uh, models which help you to or help the organization to um, um, identify at risk um, customers or customers who are likely to default um, or customers who are likely to churn from a particular service or not um, would really 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 come in handy so handling risk management projects would be one of those kinds of projects that you might undertake the other bit might be able to might you know the kinds of projects that you might undertake would be fraud detection, um, especially in, within financial institutions. It's usually a big problem. So being able to come up with um, solutions which would help organizations mitigate fraud um, um, and and withstand even aggressive fraud um, attacks, and that might involve building verification systems through the use of possibly. Um, um, a part of what is called computer vision in data science. Um, so that refers to being able to read data, um, image data, and be able to have systems that would ensure that that is 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 um, um, that, that that is also addressed. Another bit that would also come in handy, especially for financial institutions, considering they normally have a lot of customers, especially banks, would also to um, work on um, customer um, experience projects where you're trying to um, look into the data and trying to understand the patterns and the trends um, um, for customers, both high value customers as well as low value customers, and seeing how you can be able to serve um, say something like, you know, um, serve, say, um, high value customers much more better so that you're able to, of course, make much more from those particular customers 
and, um, and as a result, improve the whole um, customer experience and, um, um, and, and, and it might also be across different you know, units, business units within the financial institution that you're going to be working with. So customer ex um, experience or um, even what is called customer analytics will come in handy too um, when you're trying to also understand how customers are are responding to a particular product and that would be what is called sentiment analysis. So developing also those systems that allow you to be able to collect and analyze data on whether your customers are happy about a particular service or not. And that would also inform the organization to undertake the necessary um, steps in the shortest amount possible. So um, basically those are the kinds of um, projects that you might undertake. There are different um, projects. There are many other different projects uh, I could think about, but those are the, just the most common projects that you might undertake. And um, as mentioned, um, this video was just mentioned to, was meant to help you to just understand. Okay, um, as a data scientist, this is what I'm going to be undertaking. And um, so yeah, so basically that's it. You need to first of all get your you, you need to create in terms of the domain expertise um, or side where you understand the accounting or the finance aspect or the bank aspect on how that side works. And then you also need to understand how this other side of, 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 uh, adopt, of the tech side works, being able to learn about these new methodologies or tools and what are the appropriate tools for solving for particular problems or even for even data collection um, and and yeah and undertake any of those paths and you could also become not only just basically a data scientist you could also become a data engineer who's going to be maintaining those infrastructural um, to um, those infrastructure um, 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 tools that are going to store the data that you need as well as um, transfer the data that you need from one place to another. So that is something that um, you might also want to um, think about. Maybe you might want not necessarily become a data scientist, but also maybe a data engineer or even basically a data analyst or where you just work on data analysis projects in general. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that other persons who might be interested in the same topic can get informed. Um, if you would also want to be informed when we post such future videos, be sure to subscribe and see you in the next video.